So I'm here today with Robert Hollingworth, the anniversary reader um, here at the Department of Music at the University of York. Thanks for coming to speak to us today, Robert. Why don't you start by telling us a little bit about some of the things you're involved with at York and also further afield? I know anniversary reader doesn't really do justice to everything that you do here. Well, I don't know about that, but I had to look it up when I first came to York. I wasn't sure what one was. Um, uh, I am in choral music and consort music and singing generally. I'm responsible for the singers in the department, finding them singing teachers, that kind of thing. Um, but my background is entirely in singing since I was nine, really. I was a chorister, set up my first group when I was 16, and then uh, E. Fagellini, another ensemble, when it was my second year at university, and did that for 30 years, really. Before I came to York, that was my job. Uh, and so I've always conducted professional choirs and sung in uh, one to a part groups. It's that that gives me a real kick, uh, being a soloist, but being as part of an ensemble, that was always the thing that, that's the thing that gets me out of bed in the morning. Mm. And now here at York, um, I also look after one of the choirs, the 24, which I conduct in very free hand on programming. Uh, and uh, I also teach undergraduates and both essay modules about choral music. Uh, but also some practical modules as well, and also in early 17th century singing module called Singing Monteverdi. So it's a, very much a singing base, which is my professional background. Mm. You speak about professional background. Obviously, the time we're in at the moment with the lockdown has really hit a lot of freelance musicians and people involved in performance. Um, have you been able to do anything to, to respond to that uh, in any way? Well, I was very struck by the sort of, you know, indomitable human spirit that came out very quickly in lockdown. People you know, showing that they could still play the trombone with one foot at home. And, you know, that there's extraordinary put together performances of, of Bach passions and things, uh, which were absolutely magnificent, but at the same time, could never be as good as, as being in the room. So um, I've done a couple of little spoof films of that called Not In This Together, a music for um, socially distanced musicians, um, which is a, a bit of like a sort of fado farce for, for six singers. We're still releasing those at the moment. But I've also done a little education series called uh, Sing the Score, which I release on YouTube every Friday at six o'clock right. on the Fagellini channel. And uh, they are fairly lighthearted. There's a certain amount of Monty Python and other humorous things going on in it, but just a way of trying to understand a piece of music and then having a sing through it, the score appears in front of your eyes and you sing along, having learned a little bit about it on the way. Sounds like a good thing for anybody who's wondering what they can be doing, you know, now they're in lockdown to oh, prepare yes. for, for the autumn. Yeah. And I didn't start by thinking I was doing this for students. Um, I work a lot with amateur musicians as well as with pro musicians. Um, and I was doing it for them. But actually, it's as useful for, for students just to get a sort of quick potted history of one little period, one little type of singing, and then just to see how their sight reading is that particular week as well. So that's I been a pleasure. It takes an awful lot of work uh, and a lot of production to get it right. But it looks yeah. good. I watched one of them and I certainly find it very informative, really interesting. Um, so now you've been here at York for just over eight years. And uh, I wonder, perhaps you could tell us what, what things do you value most about working in the department here? Um, well, I suppose I can't compare it with other departments because I've never worked at another university, but I find it an extraordinarily positive place. Um, and, you know, no matter what your level is, if you're not working in a place where you're really encouraged and the answer is generally yes, rather than the answer is no, I don't think we can do that, then, then you can't fulfill your potential, which are easy words to trip off the tongue. But at York, people really do fulfill their potential because they're allowed to. Uh, they're encouraged. I mean, the, a degree can't really prepare you for, for real life. Um, in the way you, what you learn academically is not going to prepare you. What, what you learn about is life and how you train your brain. So critical thinking is very important at York. But if you have an idea, we will generally let you run with it. And that's, I think, a, a valuable thing. Mm. Um, I value my colleagues. It's important for students to know just how well the backroom stuff goes on. And we all talk to each other and that massively matters. Um, I was tremendously impressed by colleagues' response to the lockdown by how they reinvented their courses. They didn't simply go online. That wouldn't have worked because not all students had particularly good Wi-Fi. Um, uh, they weren't just doing lectures online, but they were completely redesigning their courses in a matter of weeks for this summer's uh, work. Uh, so inventively and so creatively. God, that's an overused word, isn't it, creative? What does it really mean? It means the ability to respond to changing circumstances with things that are still of value. And, uh, you know, you look at Martin Suckling and our, our head of department, Onya Shale, who we all value so much, um, 
they came up with extraordinary ideas and ways of, of, of presenting stuff to, to students. Mm. So yeah, so uh, my, my colleagues, uh, most of all though, the students, because when, when I stand up in front of the 24, which is my choir here, that's what I really look forward to. Interestingly, running the 24, I think I've got better at running Fagellini uh, as a result. So my professional work has been affected by my work in the department and I find the two go hand in hand and I'm learning one thing from another. God, doesn't that sound terribly worthy? Well, there you go. <laughs> well, I'm it is your with... birthday, Robert, so you should be having okay. this reflective moment, shouldn't you? Yes. I, I worked with the National Youth Choir of Great Britain for the first time last year, conducted one of their summer courses. Learned an awful lot from that as well. Um, I'm very interested in performance as, you know, when you come to university, you're hoping to learn what the right thing is to do and, you know, exactly which side of the note you should trill off, which is absolutely, you know, part of your, uh, part of your learning. But I'm also interested in looking at what performance really means. If I stand up with a score and sing you a poem, as a singer, I'm most interested in the singing and checking, you know, How's my soft palate? Is there tension in my tongue? And all this kind of thing. And most people listening to that couldn't give a damn about that. What they're interested in is how much you're uh, uh, expressing the poetry, how much you've understood the phrasing. Uh, and a combination of these things, the technical and the emotional. Um, you know, one of the things that this lockdown has made us all very good at is filming ourselves. And students looking at themselves, they're far more critical than their teachers would ever be. And they're learning so much from, from self-criticism. Um, so uh, I think there are opportunities here. How do we present to audiences when they can't be in the room? Wow, fascinating stuff. Thank you very much, Robert. Um, thanks for talking to us today.